Hello everyone and welcome to the first book flip through in the series. Um, in the series we're just gonna flip through poetry books in, um, in literature, mostly in English. Um, I speak Arabic but I'm not very well versed with the Arabic poetry or Arabic poems so maybe another time or another year I don't know but for this series we're just gonna check um, poems and poetry now what inspired this uh, series I'm not sure if I want to say it but it is the rise of very small that's not small I don't even know how to call it these contemporary poets that just write one sentence in their books and you know market it as poetry and I don't understand why it's more like a, it feels like an Instagram feed caption with a photo beside it and there's a book by Atticus I'm sorry I'm really really sorry please don't hate me but um I remember I love reading poetry and for some reason this was the worst poetry book I've ever seen and I was very disappointed um I forgot the name of the book that's how how much I hated it but I will include it in the series and show you what I mean when I'm like when I talk, talk about these bite-sized poems and they just they feel very how do you say this um there's not so much effort in it and i don't know for this series i just want to show that there's a lot of poetry books out there with a lot of work and a lot of really good stanzas and i mean i really want to see this new poetry as like um a Rothko painting, you know, when it's when he tried to abstract everything that there's nothing left. So the landscapes that he did using a lot of thinner in his oil paints, that he abstracted the scenery till it's just blocks of colors. And I mean, for Rothko to do that, he's a master in this, and I really love his paintings, but. I'm trying to convince myself that maybe the poetry of this generation or my era, my generation is, you know, bite-sized poems where one sentence is enough to convey an entire thought process or an entire idea or an entire concept. But um, I'm really having a hard time though. Anyways, I will mention the book by the guy. I think it's his pen name anyway, so whatever. And, uh, but the one I wanted to start with is this one. It's called Botanical Shakespeare. I don't know. There's something about this book because I really also like art and I love botany and flowers and all these things. So, um, the concept of this book is just two things. They're illustrating, um, botanical flowers and also mentioning where these flowers are you know mentioned in snippets or excerpts from um shakespeare's plays and novels and whatever so and it's all you know categorized alphabetically so first one is the acornitum i'm not sure what kind of flower is this but look it says here henry the fourth the united vessel of their blood mingled with the venom of suggestion as force Perforce the age will pour and it shall never leak. Though it do work as strong as a con a conton or rash can powder. Next is acorn. So so you see here we have the acorn and then they have this beautiful illustration of an acorn and it says here like in Tempest I'm just gonna make it Violet, Act One, Scene Two. All their elves for fear creep into acorn cups and hide them there. 
Midsummer. Oh no, sorry. This is from this one. Thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels, withered roots and husks, wherein the acorn cradled. This is in the Tempest. So, I think here is the name of the character who's saying it, and then here's what they said. And it's mentioned here, you know, acorn cups are basically the the flower of the rose that they're talking about. And here's the Midsummer Night's Dream, Lysander, they mentioned it. And I really like the idea of the book. I like illustrations that come with poetry books. I'm a huge fan of it. I have a few published, and I like combining illustrations with poetry. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the series is just, you know, trying to flip through as much poetry books as I have and seeing that, you know, maybe we can, you know, bring back poetry to its, um, how do you call this? Original, not original, but pure state, you know. Next one is the almond. It's a very beautiful flower. We have almond trees in our house and it's, it's gorgeous. Um, here in Troaros and Cressida, the parrot will not do more for an almond. It's a very interesting book. I wanted to start with it because it's a simple book. It's not a heavy read. And it's a lot of images in it. We have the apple. Next one is the apricot. So I'm just going to flip through the pages uh, just to get like an overview of how the book is formatted or how the book is. Balm, barley, bay leaves, elasis, eggplant, bilberries, birch. So it's like you have these um, botanical elements and then you have, they found where these um flowers were mentioned in shakespeare's um uh, playwrights bloom cabbage chamomile caper carnations is my least favorite flowers i'm just gonna be honest i don't like anything about them i don't like how they look i don't like how they smell i mean they're flowers obviously um, but they're my least favorite flowers. Okay, uh, the cherries, chestnut, clover, clove. Okay, let's read one at least. I am that flower, domain, that mint, longevile, that columbine. Columbine is a very beautiful flower, by the way. I think uh, loves labors lost act five scene two Ophelia there's fennel for you and columbines is it columbines or columbines I'm not sure uh cork corn it's written in Macbeth cowslip Crow flowers, crown imperial, cuckoo buds, daffodils, daisies. Okay, ebony. Let's try to scroll faster. Fennel, fern, fig, flags. Aren't these? I could be wrong. This is not. What are, what are they called? Can't remember. Okay, never mind. Flax, flower, delicia, garlic flowers, ginger, gooseberry, grapes, grasses. You can like be very inspired by this by the way like you can see how you can use botanical elements in your poetry or in your novels and you know like here it says your tongue sweet air more tunable than love to shepherd's ear 
when we meet is gay when autumn buds appear that's a really nice one gay gay hazel not i mean you have to do a lot of case studies or a lot of research when you're oh these are really really gorgeous flowers honeysuckle nice and you know you can be very inspired to write your novels and your poetry using these elements um so i really love the idea of this book it really combined you know botanical art with um poetry let me see my gold flowers marjoram mint mistletoe moss mulberries mushroom i feel like i'm not reading poetry i'm more like checking what is the um flowers that are mentioned but you, un you understand the the idea of the book so interesting to the dead rattling thunder have i given fire and drifted jovially stout oak with his own vault tempest so these are like really heavy connect not really heavy deep poems and i don't know i really wish i really hope we don't lose this taste in uh, literature uh, pansies parmacetti okay parsley peach pear peas Pea flowers are really beautiful, to be honest. Um, I really like painting them; they're nice. Pepper, pine, plum. There's no more faith in thee than a stewed prune. I like this one. A fall of a tree, wife, plum tree, master. Mm -hmm. Pompeii and longing as I said for prunes so basically it's not poetry poetry it's more like you know citations from Shakespeare's uh, let me see plays and novels I mean does he write novels I think he, he just wrote plays right yeah maybe mostly plays anyways but i really like how it's you know if you want to do something similar this should be the you know i want to say standard but like your inspiration um you can still feel the the poetry in language even if it doesn't rhyme or there's no stanzas but There's a sonnet here. Okay, that's a good thing. Uh, rose. This is a rose. Interesting. The rose looks fair, but fairer we deem for that sweet odor that doth it and live. That doth in it live. The canker blooms have full as deep as dye as the perfumed tincture of the roses. Hang on such thorns. And play as wantonly when summer's breath their mass buds discloses. But for their virtue only is their show, they live unwooed and unrespected fate. Die to themselves, sweet roses, do not so. Oh, their sweet deaths are sweetest odors made. This year is poetry. Great. Okay, next. Mm. See, so, yeah, I get the gist of the book, and I like the style. I like the concept of the book, and this is like a, an easy beginning or like an easy start for the series I decided to make. And hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. 
W willow lawn wormwood. This book took longer than I thought, but uh, we're done. Is that a potato? They're so cute. Okay, so our petals now are ended. <laughs> this is really nice um, line. I like it. So yeah, this was it for the book, Botanical Shakespeare. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Although I just did like a flip through, I didn't read that much because I didn't want it to be more than five minutes of me just showing the book and doing like a quick overview. And I just wanted to explain my intentions behind creating a series like this and hopefully encouraging people to read more poetry, real heavy poetry and not one sentence poetry because I don't know. I was very disappointed and I did not enjoy that book. And I will mention which book it is or do a flip through of that book to show how much I didn't like it. So yeah, that was my opinion. And this was the preview of the book. Hope you guys enjoyed it and liked a little bit of what we're looking at. There's nice botanical drawings in it and basically a lot of the excerpts from Shakespeare's plays where it mentions these plants or these botanical elements. So thank you so much for watching and I guess I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>